Welcome back to Aura's Digest. It has been several weeks or months, <laughs> uh, perhaps. We were cooking up more stories so they could come up with something more in-depth, better, interesting. And now, this week, we have something that I love it. It's a story which has so many elements uh, to it. You know, we really have a lot of stories that are pre-colonial. A lot of the stories that uh, we have are mostly about African tribes, uh, interactions, or about Kenya, is mostly either during the colonial time or after uh, that. Now, this story is about two tribes and a meteorite. So, let's get started. Let's wind our clocks back to 6th March in 1853. Now, in the current area, which is roughly closer uh, to Cliffy, a very interesting cosmic event happened. There were three boys who came from the Druma tribe who were grazing their cattle within the rough area closer to Cliffy uh, town. And there's a meteor that came across the sky fell to the grass and burnt that area, uh, the grass area where the meteorite uh, fell. Now, as you could have imagined, during this time, this was a big story within uh, the villages. So the boys rushed back home and informed the village elders about this heavenly uh, event. The elders came, looked at the stone in the area, and they professed that this stone is a sign from the heavens. So, together with everyone in the village, they came and picked the stone. It was not a very big stone, it's about 500 grams, which is like a half a kilogram, perhaps this size. So they picked this stone, uh, took it back to the village with songs and dances. And because of this heavenly divination, one of the elders of the Diruma tribe decided, you know what, we're gonna build a temple for this particular uh, stone. So they clothed the stone, they oiled it, they put ornaments around it, built an altar, and then built sort of like a temple uh, to it, which is a house with sticks, and according to the uh, structures or the materials they had uh, at that time. Now, this temple created a lot of buzz within uh, the particular area. And this same time when this event was happening, there were two German uh, missionaries uh, who were within that area and that also observed the same cosmic event that had happened. So they decided they're gonna walk uh, up to where this uh, meteorite had fallen and with the hopes that they would collect this meteorite. But now reaching in this area in Cliffy, they realized that the Diruma tribe had already taken possession of this stone and now it's one of the most revered uh, things within that particular uh, community. So they walked up to them and found the temple that was there. Now, <clears throat> they negotiated with the elders so that they can take possession of the stone or buy it at whatever price. The elders decided this is priceless, they're not going to sell it. They don't want anyone to even come closer to it or even touch it. The missionary decided, you know what, how about we entice the, the boys who got the stone to go steal it. But the boys, since they were, they were obeying their elders, decided, you know, we can't do this. The stone is no longer ours. We've handed it over to the elders. So disappointed, uh, uh, the German uh, missionary decided to go about the preaching business within uh, that particular area. Now, this uh, temple that they built created a buzz within this area. So you had uh, people coming in from Mombasa and other areas surrounding just to come and observe this particular uh, stone. And within that time, you know, give tributes uh, to the elders, so and so forth. So it was like the first museum, if you might call it in uh, pre-colonial uh, Kenya. Now, something else happened. Now, while a lot of people were coming from different areas to come and view this particular stone, 
it irritated another tribe. And these were the Maasai's. Now, the Maasai's uh, and their nomadic nature were all the way from Nairobi up to Savu area into, into the Kilefi uh, part. So one group, tri like a sub-tribe or like a clan of the Maasai's, were busy herding the cattle from Savu uh, heading towards uh, Mombasa. And these caravans of people who were going on a sort of pilgrimage to see this particular stone were interrupting their grazing lands and disrupting their very peaceful uh, time sitting there. Uh, what really happened is not known, but it seems all this Moran decided, you know what, in order to cut this caravan of people who are interfering with our grazing, let's track where they go to and destroy that source. So this is three years after this temple had existed. So this is in 1856. Uh, the Maasai decided we've had enough of this. Yeah, people are just busy crisscrossing our land because at that time, any open land belonged to the Maasai uh, people. So they decided we're gonna destroy this temple. On a one day, a raiding party of a very large Maasai force went and hit that particular uh, village where the temple uh, was. And as in other tales, they ended up flattening the village, killing everyone, and destroying anything within uh, their path. Now, luckily enough, someone was there and went and took the stone and sneaked it out just before the Maasai uh, got there. Uh, there's no record that they were interested in the stone. They were just annoyed by the movement of people within their land. So they never took possession of the stone or tracked whoever took the stone. Neither did they steal anything from the village. They just flattened it and left everything bare or dead within uh, their path. Now, this stone left Cliffy uh, area. It's not so sure where this, uh, whoever took the stone went to, but the Maasai decided they want to go to Mombasa. It could be they were tracking the owner of the stone or whoever stole it. And when they got to Mombasa, they decided, oh, we're going to lay also everything to waste here. Uh, when they got there, by luck, uh, Mombasa had the Baluchi soldiers uh, uh, looking after Mombasa or creating a, uh, like a ring of guard within uh, Mombasa. You should note at this time, there was a power war between Said Said, who was the ruler of Zanzibar, as well as Mombasa. They were struggling over the control of Mombasa with the Mazrui family. Uh, you know about Ali Mazrui, the famous writer. His family comes from a long lineage that ruled Mombasa for centuries for that. Now, Said Said had gone all the way to the current day Pakistan. There's a place known as Baluchistan. And the people coming from there are known as the Baluch. So he took like about a thousand soldiers who came in to, you know, dislodge the Mazuri from Mombasa, and those soldiers were garrisoned there in order to protect Mombasa from the uh, the Mazuri uh, family. If you know the name Makadara, which you can find it in Mombasa, in Dar es Salaam, and in Nairobi, it's those Baluchi soldiers who gave came up with the name. It means power, God, or providence. Uh, for that, it's an Arabic word. I think it's Mark al-Dar that translates to power of God. So, uh, and they settled in the current area called Makandara Street within Mombasa, just next to Fort Jesus. So the Baluchi soldiers were there and they encountered the Maasai who perhaps were looking for the stone or were tracking all the people who left Khalifi and were running to, towards uh, Mombasa. Uh, a fight ensued between the Baluchi soldiers and the Maasai. It's safe to say the Maasai almost won the war because the Baluchi soldiers ended up barricading themselves in Fort Jesus and decided they had enough of these marauding savages. The Maasai encycled Fort Jesus and they got tired of waiting. They needed battle and they decided, okay, we, we, we're going we're gonna to march ahead. So the Maasai... Uh, Morans went south up to Vanga. Vanga is currently within the border of Tanzania and Kenya. 
when they got Divanga, no one knows what provoked them or whether they were still following the stone, but they lay west to Vanga. They just flattened it. And that was the modus operandi. Flatten, kill, uh, everything there. At this point, this team or whatever nerve that the Masai had seemed to have died off. And no one knew where the stone <laughs> was at this uh, point. This stone reappeared again somewhere between Mombasa and Kilifi. And the elders recalled back this stone. So when they sat down, they decided, you know what? This stone was a potent stone, but it seems like it has lost its potency. And because that period after the Maasai raid, also there was a, there was a drought that went there. And they believed that the stone could no longer protect them. Because part of the reason they kept the stone was because they believed it had powers to protect them against anything. It didn't protect them against the Maasai. It didn't protect them against famine, drought that was there. So they sat down and had a meeting between themselves. I'm like, okay, now we no longer need this stone. But there's somebody else who needed this stone. They remembered, oh, there was those German missionaries who wanted to buy this stone at a very big price. So they sent a party of young boys to go look for those missionaries. And they're like, hey, remember that meteorite that fell that wanted? Now we can sell it uh, to you. So the German missionary decided to exchange the, the meteorite for, you know, some cattle and other things of value at that point. So this missionary took the meteorite and gave it a name. It was called the Nuruma meteorite. And that's when that meteorite comes into the uh, literature of the Western world because they wrapped this meteorite, <coughs> call it the Druma meteorite, and send it to Munich in uh, Germany, where it was received and catalogued as a meteorite with other characteristics that it was there. It became uh, a part of uh, uh, the exhibition during that time, the geographical societies in Europe, as well as America, they wanted to study meteorites. So one of the things that happened is a meteorite was sent to the US uh, on loan to be put on exhibition uh, there where it stayed for several uh, few years, I think. And then it was sent back to the original, the Bavarian uh, Society of Science, which would now to be its permanent home for that as a rumor, uh, a meteorite. Now, uh, unfortunately, now in 1942, uh, when Britain was bombing the city of Munich in World War II, the museum which was holding this uh, meteorite got flattened together with the meteorite and other artifacts uh, that were there and all the history and records about the Duruma meteorite uh, disappeared on that. But it's safe to say this is the only stone in Kenya that has traveled so much from Cliffy County to Germany to the United States and back to uh, Germany where it finally got uh, destroyed and unknown to so many people Kenya has had so many meteorites that have uh, fallen within uh, the country the best one or the most actually fall in northern Kenya uh, within Marsabit, Wajir and Isiolo and the biggest one uh, this fell a few years back in early uh, 2000 it was so big that villagers revered it and sell it. And you can make a career out of finding meteorites that fall in Kenya and selling them to museums. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed the story.